So you might have seen that Alluvium announced they'll be on the Epic Game Store, but did you notice at the very bottom of the page, we can see the actual specs your PC needs to be to be able to run the game. I'm gonna break it down all of it for you so that you know exactly what you're looking for, what sort of PC you might be able to afford. And at the end of this video, I'm even gonna tell you what sort of PC I would recommend for those of you who are on a budget. I see this question asked a lot on the Discord where people are saying they need to buy a new PC to run Alluvium. That is simply not true. Firstly, Alluvium is actually very well optimized, especially compared to other Web3 games in the space, and it continues to get even better. These specs that I'm showing on the screen, and we'll explain in a minute, talk to that very, very well. And I'm gonna explain just where these CPUs and GPUs fit, how explain how it all works, and then break down these parts and maybe other parts you could consider buying to make up a really nice PC that will run Alluvium either decently and okay, or very, very well on a very tight budget. So I'm really looking forward to this video. I hope you guys tune in. The first thing is in this Epic Games thing, you can see the minimum specs on the left here and the recommended specs on the right. The first thing we'll notice is that minimum is Windows 10 and recommended is Windows 11. I don't have Windows 11 because I don't know how to upgrade, but I'll figure it out eventually. So Windows 10, it is for me. The CPU needs to be an Intel i3 10th gen. We'll get to the specifics of the hardware in just a minute. It needs to be an i3 10th gen and a recommended is an i5 10th gen, which is actually relatively cheap. You'd be surprised. Memory 8 to 16 gigabytes and memory 16 to 32 gigabytes. I would definitely be recommending 16 gigabytes for any PC. I think eight is too little, but you don't need 16 to be able to play the game. The GPU it's recommending is a 1660 Ti or an RX 580. Now, primarily these are actually pretty cheap. You can get them at 150 USD and we'll be pricing the whole video in USD. But secondhand, you could probably even get these for 50 to 100 bucks each, okay? So for the CPU and the GPU, you might actually be able to build a full PC for about 300 USD. I know that doesn't suit absolutely everyone, but it's definitely worth considering. And again, we'll break that down very soon. GPU for the recommended is a 2070 Super or an AMD RX 5700 XT. Um, these are both really great cards and very, very well priced. Okay, I will say I have a, I had a 2080 Super at one point. I had a 1060 for a very long time. I also have a 1660. I have a lot of different cards. Direct X 12. This should already be installed on the computer. You don't need to worry about this. Storage SSD. I definitely recommend this. Don't get a HDD on your PC. I will explain that in just a minute. Make sure you have an Alluvium account that you can take care of that. And the audio and text is English. And hopefully they'll add support for other languages in the future. So I know that there's going to be a lot of people watching that don't understand how PCs kind of work particularly well. So I'm going to give you the two minute breakdown, probably even shorter. The two main components in a computer are the CPU, the central processing unit, and the GPU, the graphics processing unit or graphical processing unit. Now, the CPU is like the brain of your computer. Basically, if you do anything, if you open a Chrome tab, if you open Photoshop, if you use pretty much any program, it's going to use your CPU. And depending on how fast your CPU is, if it has double threading and all that other fancy stuff, that's how fast your computer will run and how smooth everything will feel. Games typically don't actually rely on this too heavily, but you can run into trouble where it's still too weak. So you don't need a strong CPU, but it doesn't have to, it, but it still can't be too weak. So it needs to be somewhere in the middle, but it can be on the weaker side. Now, the GPU is the graphics processing unit. When you run around in the Alluvium overworld and you see that Atlas pop up and it's walking around, all the lights bouncing off it and everything, the GPU has to figure out all of that information. As I say, the light's coming from here. This texture has this many pixels. I need to render up this scene and this mountain. The GPU takes care of all of that. So having a good GPU is very important to be able to run the game smoothly, high frame rates, good fidelity, all of the rest of it. And that pretty much breaks down what we're looking at here. So the first thing we'll take a look at is I found an image here of the GPU power ladder. This is from Assets IO. GPU power ladder, nine game average frame rates versus RTX 2080 Ti. Obviously this is a little bit old, but this gives a good visual of where all of these different cards sit in the hierarchy. Now, as you'll remember, it recommended a 1660 Ti or an RX 580. So it looks like the 580 is a lot lower than the 1660 Ti, but it's a lot weaker. That, this basically just means it's a lot weaker. Pricing wise, we'll go through in that in a minute, 
But if you have to choose between one or the other, and they're both the same price, Choose the 1660 Ti every single time. If you want something in between the minimum and the recommended, I would definitely be going for something like a 2060 or a 2070. And the PC I'm gonna show you at the end is a 2070, and I'll show you why that's really good. But anything in that region, 5600, 2060, they're all gonna be really good cards to play Alluvium on. But even down here, the 1660 Ti, Ti is a, actually a really solid card. I expect that to run the game smoothly on uh, low graphics or medium graphics. It's actually gonna do a really good job. Now the 1660 Ti, I'm looking at US prices because of shipping and the way Amazon sorts its things. I don't know how accurate this is gonna be. So you're gonna need to do the search yourself. But 1660 Ti looks to be about $180. The RX 580, uh, 580 which is the uh, AMD solution is about 130. So it is a lot cheaper. If you're really on a budget, maybe this is the one you go for. As for the CPU rankings, we can see them all ranked here. And what I find quite interesting with this one is that the i3 10th gen, so uh, you can see here the i3 10 100 um, right here is actually right next to the i5 10th gen, which as we get up here, actually that's a lot further away than I expected, but they're not too far away from each other. I would definitely be going for an i5 even an eighth or a ninth gen. You can still see the eighth gen is a little bit above the i3 10th gen. That was the minimum spec. I'd be going for an i5 eighth or above gen on your PC, but you can go the lower end if you really need to save some money. So with the i3 10th gen, I'm looking at one here, it looks to be about $240. So if this is what's on your mind, this might be a good one to get. If I go back, that's not gonna help. Okay, so the next thing we've got is the recommended specs. Here we've got the 2070 Super, which is about $330. So it can be quite steep. You can see the average is about 350 here. And again, if you're looking for secondhand things, you can probably get it even better. So you can see these first two are renewed. I, I prefer personally to get new products, but that's more when they're newer graphics card. For these older graphics cards, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting a refurbished model um, and you're gonna get a really good deal. For AMD on the recommended, you can actually get, <laughs> What looks like maybe a renewed one or something. Some reason this is really cheap. I don't trust that price at all. It looks like the 5700 XT is probably gonna sit around the 300 to $400 mark. And as we go back to this chart, we can see the 5700 XT is just below the 2070 Super. So if they're about the same price, I would definitely inch for the 2070 Super. But if the 5700 XT is cheaper, it might be worth your bang for your buck in that case. So the last thing we're gonna cover is uh, the last two things. The i5, uh, this is a powerful i5. I'm looking for 10th gens, but these are insane. Um, is about $300, which I think is really reasonable. And you will seriously regret it if you cheap out on your Intel core. The other thing we can check out is, um, is RAM. And I'll show you how cheap some of the other components in a PC. I know there are other components of PC, but believe me, these two are the most expensive. If we look at 16 gigs of RAM, We'll see how much that costs. About $30 <laughs> or maybe $20. Um, I wouldn't go for GDR3, so GDR4, about $30 for your RAM. So you can see how cheap some of these other components are. Nail out the graphics card and the CPU we want, and then go from there. The only other thing I will show you here is a PC I found. Now, this is just below the recommended because this is a 2070 in the system instead of a 2070 Super. I don't even have the option for a 2070 Super. But for 650 on 10% off, this is actually a really good deal. I suggest you do your own research, ask your own friends for advice, and maybe even people in the Discord if they think this might be the right fit for you. I am going to put the link in the description in case you think it's going to be good a good fit. This should run Alluvium really, really well. As per the recommended specs on the Epic Game Store, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you understand a bit better how PCs sort of work and how you should be interpreting all of this information when building your PC to play the next greatest Web3 AAA game.